I just completed a 30 day test of running shorts on my channel, one new short every single day for 30 days. Now, a lot of people ask questions about whether to run shorts on their main channel, whether shorts can actually help them grow their channel, how it might interact with your other content. So I decided not to change anything about the way I was publishing regular videos or my live streams. I just added in a short every single day for 30 days. Now, the first question probably is why 30 days? No particular reason. I just thought about a month might give me some data. One thing I knew going into this is I didn't want to just make shorts and put them up. Sometimes I think creators make the mistake thinking all shorts are created equal and either they will work or they won't work. I've said since day one that you really need to develop a shorts content strategy and then try to implement it. The strategy for my channel was actually pretty simple. Whatever I publish today, I'm always thinking, well, what's gonna get that viewer to watch again tomorrow? I had started with a very simple community tab post on my channel and a tweet that coincided with it that talked about the idea of trying to learn something new and how if you just took a moment every morning to learn one simple thing, imagine how far you could be if you did that every single day over the course of a year. That's actually how I taught myself to play piano. So knowing that I had had some longer form content that did actually pretty well on the channel called Da Vinci Resolve for Noobs, I thought it would be cool to do an entire short series where every day I dropped a single tip for someone who's new to using DaVinci Resolve. Show them one feature or show them one quick tip that can help them learn to use the software better. My thought was, if one of these is valuable, then many of them should be valuable too. I also wanted to see if any of the things that we already know about edited content and how that works together over time applied to how shorts might work together as a group. So let's dive into some of the data. Now I've taken all these videos and put them together in a group in my analytics so that all the data we're looking at is every one of those videos combined. Now here in advanced mode, we're looking at sort of the standard things we would see in any video. We're looking at views, watch time, subscribers, revenue, average view duration, impressions, and click-through rate. Now you might be thinking to yourself, why are we looking at impressions and click-through rate? One of the things you wanna think about is that shorts can be served in places other than the short shelf, like recommendation or search, or even in channel pages. But one of the things I really wanna look at is how these shorts performed on the short shelf itself. So let's add in two other metrics to this data shown in feed so we know how often these shorts were being shown to people in that short shelf. And let's also add in viewed versus swiped away. So that'll give us an idea of how many times when those shorts were presented to somebody in the short shelf, they took the time to watch or if they swiped past it. Another thing I wanted to look at was some of the subscriber metrics. One of the things I hear from creators a lot of the time is they think that shorts push away their regular subscribers from the channel and might even get them to unsubscribe if they start seeing shorts. Now YouTube has told us that they're changing the way these shorts are being surfaced and not everybody gets a notification when a short goes live and it should be targeted more towards people who actually do enjoy watching the shorts from different channels. So for this test, I did leave all of the notifications on as I would with any other video. Now, as we're looking here, we're just seeing how many subscribers overall these shorts gained, but let's add a few more metrics in to get a better idea of what was really going on. Let's add in two different metrics here, subscribers gained and subscribers lost. Now, when we look at the actual subscriber data, I gained about 1147 new subscribers from this short series and I lost about 41. Now, some people get really triggered when they find out they're losing subscribers at all, but if you look at my channel averages, I tend to lose between 1,500 and 2,000 subscribers every single month overall. That's actually really common for a channel my size. It's the subscribers gained number that offsets all of that that we're always trying to keep higher. My subscribers gained can vary anywhere between 4,000 to 30,000 depending on the month. So when I look at that 41 subscribers loss, that's actually proportionately very low for my channel. Shorts didn't seem to push a lot of subscribers away. They actually brought more people to the channel than anything else. Now, when I was making these shorts, I started off really gung-ho. I made three to five and I would get them all set up and get them scheduled to go live. And that was actually a really good feeling to have all these videos in place, knowing that they were right there in the chamber and I didn't have to do anything. Every day they would just publish automatically. But I will say as time rolled on, as simple as you think it would be to make shorts, that actually became quite a workload. Every day, making sure I had a new short that was gonna drop. Now I was actually learning as I was creating these shorts. 
A lot of people will see one short do well and another short not do well, and they think that there's some crazy thing going on with YouTube that they don't understand or that YouTube is playing some crazy games with these shorts. But as we've learned, not all videos are created equal. It really comes down to how each one impacts the target audience. Now you'd think some of the shorts that were up for the longest amount of time would have the most views and the most subscribers, but that really wasn't the case. Some of the ones I made much later into the series started doing very well for views and subscribers. Now that could have been because of some momentum of the earlier ones starting to move the whole set forward, or it could have been the targeting for that specific short. Maybe the topic was just a little more informative for the people who were trying to learn DaVinci Resolve. One thing I did learn pretty quickly is I had been starting all of these shorts out with the exact same format and titling structure. It had an intro, it had the information, and at the end I would push them back towards a longer form video teaching people how to get started with DaVinci Resolve. What I noticed about halfway through this cycle is everything started flatlining. These shorts weren't really popping when I was dropping them no matter what day they went out. People didn't seem to be really responding overall, and they were just kind of stuttering there. So halfway through, I decided to do something different, and I just changed the titling structure and the structure of the short itself. I removed the ending, pushing back towards longer form content, with the idea of thinking, well, people who were enjoying this were getting hit with that same message day after day. Maybe that was a little too needy of me. Maybe I was coming across as an asshole, always asking for that thing every single day. So I took that out, and I also looked at the titling. Now I know the title sits right over the short, superimposed, and people can see it as they're watching the short. And in the beginning, I started all of them with DaVinci Resolve for noobs. But what I did was I reversed that so that the title started with exactly what someone would learn every single day with each short. I will say I noticed an immediate improvement. Shorts went from coming out being number nine or number 10, and they jumped right up to always being in the top three. Is that just because of those changes? Kind of hard to say exactly, but it was such a noticeable change exactly when I changed the strategy that I think that started connecting with viewers better. That's a really positive sign because it does give us the idea that titles might actually matter for shorts. Now, when I got to that 30 day mark, I just stopped. And I did that for two reasons. One, I wanted to see what happens with the momentum when you just stop publishing these videos. And to be quite honest, I was getting a little burnt out doing that many. I know that's not a lot to some people, but it was a lot of work on top of my regular workload. Let's look a little more closely at the data from that 30 days. Now, some interesting stats here is that that entire short series drove over 118,000 views, added almost 1,300 subscribers to the channel, added about 930 watch time hours. But if you notice, the minute I stopped publishing those shorts, everything dropped off. The views dropped off, the amount of subscribers that they were driving dropped off, and the amount of times that they were shown in feed dropped off. Another interesting thing is that if you look at the traffic sources and switch over to something other than the shorts feed, you'll see that all of those recommendations started dropping off as well. One thing I did notice is these shorts had absolutely no negative effect on my regular video performance during that time frame. Now, an obvious question is, how will these 30 videos perform moving forward? Will the fact that I stop publishing these shorts every day lose momentum for the series? Will they continue to keep going on and driving more and more views? Did these shorts actually start working together so that publishing more of them was more effective than just publishing fewer? If I started publishing daily shorts again on the same topic, would those new shorts help rejuvenate the performance of the previous ones? And another important question is, are the things that I'm saying right now actually setting up for future shorts and giving people an expectation and a reason to watch some future videos from me? Yes. I'll keep you posted on how this series performs as we move forward. But if you wanna learn more about how to make better content and grow your YouTube channel, click on the video that I have on screen now or the one that I'll link down below. Keep creating. Peace.